right i have finished i've just finished filming the biology one obviously if you don't if you're not going on to do biology at a level you probably didn't watch that if you did come from that one sorry you can skip on a bit but this is just a little intro for anybody that didn't watch that one my name is Liv and I am a year 12 student who is, I'm on summer holidays now but in September I'm going into my final year, I'm going into year 13 um, and I am at sixth form studying biology, psychology and criminology. And I've been talking for so long, honestly my jaw hurts but I'm not going to blabber on, obviously you're here to, to listen about psychology today uh, which is one I say one of my favourites, I only do three subjects, which is like like my top subject that I just enjoy. That is all I'm going to say on the intro and I'm going to get straight on into this video. That, that intro was such a mess, but I don't really care anymore. I've been talking for like 20 minutes. I have a list here, like I said in the biology one. Um, that is the list. Ignore how messy it is. The pen was running out. You get the gist. For psychology, I am going to talk about the content, homework, revision and exams. And I have at the end general tips for subject, but I've, I just found with biology that I ended up just scattering them throughout the video. So I will probably say throughout, once I've said the tip, I'll say that is a tip I have. And then I'll have a, I'll leave a list for them down below. I'll just get straight on into the content because that's what you're here for. Um, so content wise, there are three subject areas there is the cognitive approach the biological approach and the socio-cultural approach i haven't done the socio-cultural approach yet i'm going on to that next year i can only talk for biology for biological and cognitive those are the only two i have done i have my a level my biology textbook i can't speak anymore i've lost it um i don't have a textbook for psychology I have three booklets which are the most helpful things on the planet. What I am talking about is these bad boys. These booklets are so helpful. Um, I've been using my biology one so it's open currently on a different page. Um, but this is what they look like. I will leave the link to the PDF versions down below for you um, because I can say that with the exam board, everybody does IB psychology and that is global. So all of the content is in these that you will need. Um, these are so helpful because, oh, they, they are literally just paper. So you've got the contents there. Um, what that uh, topic, like what cognitive is about. And then it goes straight into it and it explains it, what it is, definitions. And then all the studies you need. The studies are the big thing you need to remember for psychology. Um, so having them all there is so helpful. They even have like a full definition for that. For each approach, there are about four parts. Um, three of them is something that everybody needs to learn. And then the fourth part is usually higher learning extension, um, which your teacher will tell you if you need to learn that or not. Part one of cognitive approach is cognitive processing this is your memory and basically like the processing in your brain how that all works so yeah like models of memory schema thinking and decision making which are all very um interesting to me anyway uh to which you need to remember about um three two or three um studies for each part which sounds like a lot but once you condense it all and just remember like the key numbers the results findings the method everything like that it's not that hard it sounds a lot but it's it's genuinely not um the part two to cognitive is the reliability of them so reconstructive memory um biases biases um and that's really it each time in each um part you need to be thinking about the um, applications um, and the ethical consideration. Part three, emotion and co cognition. Uh, so that's the influence on your emotion, on how you think, what you remember, stuff like that. Um, and then part four, which is higher learning, and that is the influence of digital technology. So how your phone affects your memory using things like Google, because it's literally there. You won't remember it because you can just Google it. 
so that's the content for cognitive for biological let me get that open sorry i'm like trying to read it so i'm not looking at the camera i'm looking down here uh for content part one is the brain and behavior uh which looks at techniques used to study the brain so mris uh fmris pet scans ct scans stuff like that uh localization so putting a function to a part of the brain so putting memory to the hippocampi or putting eyesight to the occipital lobe uh, neuroplasticity the brain's tendency to mold to learning new information and making new neural pathways and then neurotransmitters and their effect on behavior part two is hormones and behavior so that's looking at hormones and pheromones and how they interact with you how you interact with them and how they affect your behavior things like oxytocin the love and trust hormone um, and stuff like that part three is genetics and behavior which is quite an interesting topic so your genetics and behavior looks at your genes and behavior your genetic similarities and your evolutionary evolutionary explanations for your behavior and then part four which is the higher length i can't speak anymore la, 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 la. it's your higher learning bit which is the extension which looks into animal research which is kind of common sense when you think about it, like but yeah it looks at like the values and ethical considerations and whether it can link to humans and whether we can actually see that link because obviously there are some animals that are so unlike humans that's the content for that one i'm not going to go over sociocultural too much because i still don't obviously understand it because i haven't done it so that's just those two um that's the content for each one like i said you need to remember the studies you don't have to remember it in that much detail but just remember the basics of the study and you'll be fine um if you don't remember the exact number of participants but you're around so say the number of participants is 86 but you say 94 you're still within that close range that you're gonna get a mark for it so that's it for content wise homework i can't really talk they were sort of the same like i'd, I'd, I'd love both the teachers um but like, I mean, they're both the same in the sense that they didn't really set like loads of homework. A lot of the homework they set was nine marker and 22 marker practices, which are so helpful. Um, but other than that, it was like sort of just like research and answering a couple of questions about a study. They didn't really set too much. I'm like trying to actually think. Um, but yeah, like watching some documentaries and making notes on it. That was all they really set for homework. Your teacher might set something different. Um, so yeah, that's all I can say on homework. I, like I said with biology, I write homework down thinking I'd have much more to say. But now I'm talking about it, I'm like, I don't have a lot. And it's obviously very subjective to your teacher. It's two o'clock. Next up, I have revision and exams. My teacher didn't set too many exams. But when she did set an exam, it was a big one. As for revision, all I can say is just revise the um, studies. One thing my teacher made us, which I think is so helpful, I will put like a screenshot of it on screen or a picture of it or whatever. Um, it was like a table in which it would have the topic down, not the topic, the topic across the top and then it would have uh study one study two study three so you had three columns and then it had what was the aim the method the findings the conclusion and then the strengths and limitations which you have to remember the strengths and limitations and critical thinking use it like it's literally there the whole section on critical thinking read it um so you can make something like that or a flashcard or whatever um they're really helpful to revise studies which are th which studies are the only thing you have to revise for in psychology really um and just the definitions the way nine markers and 22 markers are structured you have to give the definition so at least know the definition of what you're talking about and then you just have to remember the study and that's it revise the definitions of key terms excuse me um and then revise the study by making flashcards and condensing it down 
to the refined points. Uh, but that's all I can really say for revision. And then for exams, um, psychology is, I think it's 80% exams, 20% coursework. I am just going on to the coursework with the internal assessment, uh, which I have to plan over the summer holidays for mine. I'm I can't talk too much about it because I, not that I don't understand it, but I don't know too much about it. All I know is you have to pick a study to replicate and write up about. So that's really all the... <laughs> I've changed my position slightly. I'm sorry I had to end the video there. As far as I'm aware, you have three papers. My third paper has been removed, so I only do two. Um, in which the first one is about two hours long, which you do three questions, three nine markers, and then you pick a 22 marker each, each nine marker. Um, you have one for cognitive, one for biological, one for sociological. That's your three nine markers. And then a 22 marker... You have three of them, but you get to pick one. And then paper two, I'm not too sure what that is. Um, so yeah, sorry. Um, as for exams, like nine markers, they are called nine markers and 22 markers. Whereas in biology, you don't call them by their marks. Um, but nine markers have a really easy structure of, you give the definition, give a simplified, like, what the study was really simplified and then just put in a strength and limitation at the end and then add in a one sentence conclusion of your own about that and you're done um they really don't take that long like 15 minutes tops maybe um not even that i'd say but 22 markers the, the one thing i think a lot of british teachers will say is it's a mark a minute 22 markers are not that they are not they take so long um because you have to do you have to give an introduction and then you have to give which is about the topic of the 22 marker and then you have to give a paragraph on the studies you're going to use and how that you have to const constantly link to the topic and then how they link to the topic and then you have to go into your first research method and then the fourth paragraph will be your strengths and limitations and once again how they link and how they link to humanity and stuff um and then you have to go into your wait one two, your fifth paragraph which is your second research method which tip is always helpful if you contradict your first one um because it makes it easier in the conclusion but if you can only think of research methods that um link then that's fine but it's just always easier to find a contradicting method for the second one um and then and then you have to do again another paragraph with the strength limitations of that one and then you have to add in your conclusion at the end um you can see it's a lot but once you get into the hang and like the swing of writing them it's fine yeah that's all i can really comment on exams my teacher didn't set a lot yours might she more set them for homework um because they're not, they are exams but they don't feel like exams because they're not questions like you you got a gcse if that makes sense right that is it for psychology um if you have any other questions or queries let me know below um or like i said in biology dm me or you know to like ask me on my socials and I can answer them for you if you are going into psychology and just want to talk about the subject you can also do that and uh yeah good luck if you're going into it hope you do well if yeah if you're going into year 12 doing it and you would like an update um of what year 13 is like in it I let me know and I'll film that next year so you can watch when you're about to go into year 13 and um, that is it. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed. I hope it was helpful and good luck with psychology. I'm going to go on to film criminology now. If you don't do criminology or you're not going to do it, that's fair. You don't have to watch it. But if you are or you would just like to watch it to know what it's like, then go on over to that video. And yeah, uh, if you don't watch that video, I will see you in my next big main video. Bye, guys.